Hello, welcome to worship today. My name is Dory Newcomer and I'm the pastor at the Lima United Methodist Church. I'm recording this welcome from the porch of the parsonage and I had to put on a sweatshirt because it's gotten so chilly. Can you believe that this week autumn begins? We've got all kinds of transitionings happening, but we're so thankful for the steadfast love of the Lord that never ever changes. Our worship focus today is on another one of Jesus' I Am statements. This one is found in John chapter 6, verse 35, and Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. During the month of September, our memory verse is Psalm 146, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, I will praise the Lord. As long as I live, I will praise the Lord while I have being. It's my prayer that our worship service today will help you praise the Lord, will help you feel God's abundant love and mercy, and will help you experience a fullness in Jesus Christ. Let us worship God. Hello, I'm Trevor Sala. Please join me in the call to worship. The bread of life has come among us. What is the bread of life? It is none other than Jesus Christ, God's beloved Son. We hunger for the true bread that will nourish our souls. Come then to Christ who feeds us with his very life. We come ready to be filled. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Revive us again. Praise Thee, O God, for the Spirit of life who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Revive us again. child with thy love may each soul be rekindled with fire from above hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again Please join me in the opening prayer. We praise you, O God, for the meaning that you give to our lives in and through Jesus. He is the sign of your deep and everlasting love for the world, and we rejoice in his promise to sustain us with his life. Fill our emptiness with his goodness. Make us truly thankful for your gift to us of the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ, your Son, our living Lord. Amen. Hey everyone, here's a quick update for Help Build Hope here at Lima. Everyone's working hard, can you hear the noise?
everyone. The walls are going up. Take a look at this action. Hey everyone, see this empty parking lot? On September 23rd and 24th, it won't be empty anymore. Help Build Hope is coming back to Lima. And we are partnering with Covenant United Methodist Church from Springfield. And not only are we gonna build one house, we're gonna build two. All the walls that we build on those days are gonna to go to a house, rumor has it, somewhere in Pennsylvania that needs a new home. Please sign up and volunteer. We can use all hands on deck. So don't forget, you want to come and see us see everything happen on September 23rd and 24th here at Lima Church. Don't forget to sign up and don't forget to come and make a difference. We'll see you there. And let's fill this parking lot. Our scripture for today is John chapter 6, verses 32 to 42. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and, will, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Thus ends the reading for today. Praise be to God. The bread basket. Is there any better way for a restaurant to say, welcome, we're glad you're here, than with a bread basket? Whether it's garlic bread at an Italian restaurant or chips and salsa at a Mexican restaurant, hush puppies at a southern seafood joint, or crusty rolls with creamy butter at a steakhouse, nothing makes me say, boy, am I glad we went out to eat tonight, like the bread basket. To me, the bread basket is a sign that long before we got in the car to drive to the restaurant, Somebody was thinking about us, anticipating our arrival and working behind the scenes to make the dough, let it rise, shape it, and bake it. Bread is a sign that someone cares about my hunger and is preparing ahead of time to meet my needs. Sometimes the bread tastes so good I have to make a conscious effort to stop eating so I don't run out of room for my entree. For many of us, our biggest mealtime challenge is making sure we don't eat too much. But very few people in Jesus' day had that worry. Most of the people Jesus surrounded himself with were poor. Their biggest mealtime challenge, in fact, their day-to-day -day challenge, was making sure there was enough food to eat. The Roman officials, of course, knew how food insecure the people were. So they made a show out of giving free food from time to time in an effort to placate and influence the people. The free food from the Romans was like 
a spoonful of sugar to make the unpleasant medicine go down. People under Roman rule had a lot to be angry about. Giving them food was a way to placate them and buy their cooperation. I was surprised to read about this practice in my Gospel of John commentary this week, how the Romans used free food to keep the peace, but it makes sense. But still, what a mean trick. It was not a gracious sharing. It was not food given with the people's best interests at heart. On some level, the subjects of Roman rule probably knew that but they were under-resourced. Scarcity was their reality. So they took the food wherever they could get it. Our gospel lesson today picks up just after Jesus has fed a large crowd of people, reportedly 5,000 men, plus we don't know how many women and children, with five small barley loaves and two little fish. Jesus turned this modest bread into an abundance of food, so much so that there were 12 baskets of bread left over. Talk about a sign that someone cares about our hunger. We can imagine that every person who ate that meal went home thinking, did you see that bread basket? Actually, there were 12 of them. Boy, am I glad we came out to hear Jesus tonight. Jesus wanted to be sure that the people could tell that this meal was a lot different from the typical Roman free food event. Jesus called himself the bread of life and said he was nothing like the politically motivated meals they had experienced before. Jesus did not feed the people to try to convince them to feel better about a government that didn't care whether they lived or died. Jesus fed them to convince them to put their faith in the God who was willing to die so that God's goal of us having abundant and eternal life could be fulfilled. Jesus' teaching was so strange sounding, the people weren't quite sure what to make of it. The only thing they could compare it to was after the Passover, when Moses led the Hebrew people out of slavery, wandering in the desert for 40 years before arriving in the Promised Land. During that important period in Jewish history, every morning except the Sabbath, God provided a bread basket of sorts manna, which the people gathered up from the ground and ate. Manna was legendary stuff for the Jewish people. But Jesus was standing in front of them today and the food he had given them was not manna. And they wanted to know, Jesus, who are you? Are you a prophet like Moses, Moses who gave us bread from heaven? And Jesus says, no, I'm not like Moses. I'm not a mediator, the go-between who helps you get the bread from heaven. I myself am the true bread from heaven. Wow, well, we can see why the people got upset. John says that Jesus' Jewish audience began to grumble and take offense at Jesus saying, I am the bread that came, came down from heaven. They pointed out, isn't this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose parents we know? How can he say I came down from heaven? He was born in Bethlehem. He was raised in Nazareth. He didn't come from heaven. He came from regular people we know, warts and all. Who is he to claim he's so special? All of us in worship today are here because we believe Jesus is indeed special. But we can see how shocking that would have been for the people who knew him from the neighborhood. Last week we talked about, how, about Jesus, how he described himself by saying, I am the light of the world. And we saw how those words connected Jesus to the very beginning of time. He was telling his Jewish audience that he is the light, the divine energy that created the world. And as we look at this week's statement, I am the bread of life, Jesus is connecting himself with the divine energy that sustains the world. He's drawing a contrast between the bread he offers, bread that leads to eternal life, and that of the Romans, Bread that suckers the Israelites into submitting to an exploitative regime. He's drawing a contrast between the bread he is, a sign of God's welcome, God's planning and provision for our eternal needs, and the manna, also given by God, but with a much shorter shelf life. These ideas were hard for the people to accept. And I'm thankful that John, as he wrote his gospel, didn't gloss over how difficult it was for people in Jesus's audience to believe. 
It makes me feel better about the times I have trouble trusting. I think that's part of why such a big deal was made of the 12 baskets of leftover bread. The bread basket at a restaurant is a sign of welcome, but it's also a sign of abundance. It sends a message, there will be plenty of food here for you. You will get your money's worth. You will get your fill. The 12 baskets of leftovers from this miracle feeding are sending a similar message. With God, you will never be under-resourced. You will never be hungry because there's plenty of grace for you. There is plenty of love for you. If you follow Jesus, you will get your money's worth. You will get your fill. Those 12 baskets of leftovers are meant to reassure us that Christ is love enough for us all. We all need reassurance. Food insecurity is an issue for some families in our area. We learned in July that the Media Food Pantry serves 160 families a week. That is a significant number of people. But I think an even more significant number of people need reassurance about life in general. We might not be food insecure, but we're insecure. Given all of our challenges, we wonder, is there really enough in Christ for me, for all of us? Last Sunday morning, I woke up early from a dream, a dream that I was being buried alive. I knew immediately what this dream was telling me, that I have too much on my plate right now. I have too many items on my to-do list. I felt a lot of anxiety about all the things that needed my attention right now. So I did something I don't think I've ever explicitly done in church before. I asked for help for me. Oh, I've asked for help lots of times before in church. Sign up for this event, volunteer at that, help fill these openings. But last Sunday, I straight up asked people to help me. And guess what? People said yes. Before worship last week, I walked from the parsonage to the church, feeling anxious and a little alone. I felt like all I had were five small barley loaves and two little fish to feed a large crowd. But by asking for help and people responded, I experienced abundance. And even though I hadn't eaten in several hours, I walked home after church, feeling as if I had a full belly, nourished and ready for the busy days ahead. A full belly feeling. Do you think by calling himself the true bread from heaven, that is the exact feeling Jesus wants us to feel? Recently, I picked up a book by Diana Butler Bass called Freeing Jesus. And in it, she tells of a time when her preschool age daughter was fixated on the question, where does Jesus live? Diana was raised Methodist, so she told her daughter, Jesus lives in your heart. But Diana's husband was raised Presbyterian, so he told their daughter, Jesus lives in heaven. Both of these are good answers. We call the idea that Jesus lives in heaven transcendence. The idea that God is out there or up there or from beyond. And Jesus alluded to this when he called himself the light of the world. God is someone or something we can't quite grasp. Someone so much bigger and awesome than us. The idea that Jesus lives in our hearts is an example of imminence. God is close by and speaks directly to us and is even small enough to fit inside of us. Our Methodist heritage is big on imminence. Diana Butler Bass did not explain these two words, transcendence and imminence, to her daughter. We may never have heard these two words before either. But we know from our own experience that God is both out there and in here, beyond and within mystery and practicality. We know this paradox as well as we know our own selves. Diana Butler Bass wrote that for a month, her daughter just couldn't let the question go. She asked everyone she met, where does Jesus live? And finally, after considering all of the grown up answers to her question, she turned to her mother one Sunday morning in church after communion and announced, Mama, Jesus isn't in my heart, he's in my tummy. 
out of the mouths of babes, right? Maybe what Jesus wants more than anything for us is to ingest and digest and metabolize the truth of his being. Maybe what Jesus wants for us more than anything is to have a belly full of his life. The early church struggled with this image of Jesus as the bread of life. Outsiders mocked them and called them cannibals. Insiders wondered, what is this life all about? It raises the question, why would Jesus give us such a provocative, even controversial image of himself? What does he want us to see as we look again and again at this word picture? What comes to mind for me today is the bread basket, a symbol of God's prevenient grace, evidence of how God plans ahead and anticipates our needs and is already at work feeding us because God understands our hunger better than anyone. Free food, not given to trick us or manipulate us or placate us like the Romans offered, but a table set before us in the presence of our enemies, to fill us forever. As we ponder this I am statement, let's once again ask God to help us see things as they really are, to see God's abundant mercy, God's generous provision, God's faithful filling. Can we see things as they really are and leave here with a full belly feeling, with trust renewed, and hope restored, the bread basket is proof that God sees our hunger, knows our needs, and is already on the job working so we can be filled forever. Amen. I just have a couple of action items to share with you. You saw earlier in the video our uh, promotional for Help Build Hope. So that's coming up next weekend. So far, the weather forecast looks great. We would really appreciate your prayers for great weather and a great turnout. If you haven't already signed up, we encourage you to sign up. We need help on Friday afternoon for cutting the wood, but mostly we need help on Saturday. And the Help Build Hope website has had a few glitches and some people haven't been able to sign up. So if you're having trouble with that, just give the church office a call and Christina will be happy to sign you up. And if you can't sign up and you just wanna show up, that's fine too. We look forward to seeing as many people as possible next Saturday. We'll be registering starting at eight with uh, Frank Barkowski's famous breakfast sandwiches. And we'll actually have a little set time of devotions and instructions at 8.30 and we'll be hammering away before nine. So that's next Saturday. We're trying to only do one big event a month, but because our Help Build Hope event is close to the end of October, we, uh, close to the end of September, we already need to start thinking about our October event, and that's our rummage sale. So that's coming up the 6th, 7th, and 8th of October with drop off on Wednesday, October 5th. So if you'd like to help with the rummage sale or you have items that you'd like to donate, take a look at your calendar for flip one page and look at October and see if that um, those few days will work for you. So that's coming up October 5th, 6th is drop off and then 6th, 7th and 8th for the sale. We're so thankful for all of the people who have a spirit of service 
and want to do good um, as a way to show how much they love God. So those two events will be um, really big events in the life of Lima Church, and we appreciate your prayers and appreciate your support. Thank you. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The bread of life has come among us, Jesus Christ, God's beloved son, our nearest friend. Go in peace and serve your Lord. Amen.